Does whiskey have a sense of terroir? Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies. And in this video, I'm gonna do a review of the Kilhoman 100% Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. So, terroir is a French concept, meaning essentially that it expresses a sense of place. While the word terroir means earth or dirt, the word uh, from the French means a lot more of that, and it's more commonly used when talking about wine. So I'm gonna address the question, in addition to reviewing this whiskey, that issue, particularly since I think this is a whiskey that is at least making an attempt to give us a sense of the terroir of Isla. But before I get into all that, here are my notes. Cohoman 100% Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. 100% of the barley comes from Isla. It was aged in ex bourbon casks. It is bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. It is non chill filtered. It has natural color and sells for anywhere between $100 and $110 here in the United States. Alrighty, without going into a real long lecture on the issue of terroir, because this is a topic that's actually uh, discussed and debated a lot among uh, wine connoisseurs, sommeliers such as myself, winemakers, uh, vineyard uh, managers, and so forth, as to what is terroir and whether or not a wine is expressing a terroir, and whether or not, as carry over, uh, a whiskey can have a sense of terroir. Essentially, um, in wine, Terroir in a wine means that a wine is ex expressing a sense of place being from here rather than from over there. And this concept goes all the way back to when the French monks were planting vineyards in Burgundy and they recognized, hey, these grapes from these soils over here are producing better wines than these grapes from those soils over there. Now, scientifically, they didn't understand the difference between those soils and this soils, but they didn't recognize, hey, there's something different about this place versus that place. Now, this is the reason why most French wines are uh, named not after a grape, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cap Franc, or something like that, or Petit Verdot, or uh, Pinot Noir, or Chardonnay, Rather, they're named after the sense of place, and more often than not, with the exception of, say, Burgundy, uh, grapes are blended to uh, provide a profile, and the goal is for that wine to have a sense of place, that this is a wine which reflects this particular region within, say, Bordeaux, or within the Loire, and so forth. So, you can have wines that are highly manufactured. They're, manuf they're harvested by machines. They are not sorted. Uh, they're indiscriminately put into uh, the crusher. Um, the winemaker then maybe adds uh, tartaric acid. They may use reserve uh, grape juice to add color called mega purple. So in other words, Winemakers can sort of, depending on where they're at and what's legal and the law is different from place to place, but they can sort of do a Frankenstein on the wine to get to a profile that they think the consumer is going to like. Now, I would say this, the wines that tend to go through that are your cheaper wines because the producer is saving money by going completely mechanized and then rather than doing hand sorting and being really particular about the grapes, they're just throwing in some uh, coloring and using some reserve grape juice to add sweetness, or they leave some residual sugar in, and they may use fake oak character by using chips and all that kind of stuff to produce the wine. So if you like really, really cheap wine and you think you're getting a headache because you're allergic to certain components in a wine, such as sulfites, no, you're not getting a headache from sulfites. Your body produces sulfites. Dried fruits have sulfites. You're getting headaches from all that stuff that's in your cheap wine that isn't actually coming from grapes. And we call that MOG, material other than grapes, all right? Now, I know I've talked a lot about wine already. Let's get into talking about whiskey. So, your very fine wines from, say, Bordeaux, from Burgundy, from the Napa Valley, and other places uh, have a sense of place. They express where they're from. Now, the question is, 
Can this happen with whiskeys? And the answer is, I believe so, yes, it can. Now, just as not all wines have a sense of terroir or place, they, it's more like something, something coming out of a machine. Likewise, not all whiskeys have a sense of place uh, from them either. So the challenge though is, in order to know whether or not a whiskey has a sense of place, you have to taste a number of whiskeys from that place and then determine, you know what? That whiskey made somewhere else with different barley, perhaps different water, uh, different air, and so on and so forth would provide a different whiskey. The challenge is, say with Isla is, there aren't a bunch of different producers producing 100% Isla whiskeys. But if you grew barley on one part of Isla and on another part of Isla, another part of Isla, and then made a whiskey from all three different barley fields in the exact same way, in the exact same distillery, using the exact same oak, and then notice differences, you would say, hmm, it very well could be the difference between this whiskey and this whiskey and this whiskey is the fact that the barley is coming from a different place. Or some other factors, such as the smoke, the peat, uh, the salt that might be provided from exposure to the oceanic air. So, there are a number of different factors that can contribute to a whiskey potentially having a sense of place. And probably one of the biggest components when we're talking about Isla is the peat character. Um, a lot of other distilleries not on Isla produce heavily peated whiskeys, uh, even in the Highlands, of course, Orkney and some of the other uh, northwestern islands of Scotland. So the goal for this whiskey is to have something that's 100% authentic, really expresses a place of Isla, and the only way to know if it really, really is doing that would be to have other distilleries trying to do the same thing and doing a comparison, which we don't have the ability to do. All right, I know there's gonna be a lot of discussion, a lot of debates, a lot of agreements and disagreements in the comments down below. Feel free to do so. But I've spent 20 years in wine, been in whiskey for four years, and it's a subject I've read a lot about, heard more than my fair share of lectures on, spent plenty of time having these discussions among my fellow sommeliers and other winemakers, masters of wine, masters, uh, master sommeliers. It's a topic that's always gonna come up. So, what am I getting on this whiskey? It has very, I say medium to medium minus intense smoke. Very lightly peated. In terms of fruit, mostly citrus. I'm getting a lot of lemon, lemon pith. There's also a sweeter note to it. There's a slight floral note as well. Maybe like honey and honeysuckle. The, there's a maltiness there as well. A little bit of vanilla. All right, on the palate. Mm. One more. Really, really nice. This is sort of a light, delicate whiskey. The smoke and peat, I would say, is moderate to moderate minus, and it sort of runs underneath all the other characteristics. What you get up front is a lot of citrus, lemon, lemon drop. You get a little bit of vanilla. There's sort of a little bit of a, even like a lemon custard character there. There is a definite maltiness and just a little bit of saltiness. It doesn't have a lot of evolution. In other words, from the front to the middle to the finish, it's pretty much the same. What lingers is those citrus notes and a little bit of smoke. Um, the balance is nice, even though it doesn't have a lot of evolution. It doesn't have a lot of intensity of flavor, but you don't necessarily always want that. Uh, putting a little bit of water doesn't change it much, and putting on ice doesn't change it much either, but it doesn't hurt it. Of course, you wouldn't want the ice to melt too much. So, it's not overly complex. It doesn't have a lot of development, 
but it's nice and even has sort of a refreshing character to it in terms of the citrus notes, which I really, really like. So it's a nice whiskey. It's not a mind blowing whiskey. It's not necessarily a real thought provoking whiskey, but, but it's nice. Uh, in terms of a score, I'm gonna give this solid, I'm gonna go 87 plus maybe 88 points, 87, 88 points in that range. So it's very, very, very good. It doesn't have any flaws in it. it the, the flavor doesn't stop really, really, really short. Um, it's a really nice whiskey. Alrighty, that's it for this review. If you subscribe to this channel, well, thank you very much. And if you have not yet subscribed, I would appreciate it if you would and give this video a thumbs up. And I want to give a special thanks to all my patrons who support this channel. All right, until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.